I'm gonna set up a home cinema here and I'm gonna try and do it on a budget. So here's the lounge where it's gonna be. And the first problem I've got is I have no uninterrupted wall here to put the picture on. So over here I've got big gaps in the wall that go through to the other room. Along here I've got these four little windows, so that's a problem. I've got windows on the back and I've got doors that go outside. So I can't get away with just projecting it onto a wall, which I've done in the past and it's been fine. So I'm gonna use a projector screen. And this is the wall I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna have a drop down screen here and that's where the picture will be. Here are the main items, the uh, projector and the sound system. Now the projector is a uh, BenQ TH683 and that costs less than a grand and the speakers are Z906 and the reason I got these is because it's pretty cheap like this costs less than 400 bucks so I've got a five speaker surround system it decodes Dolby Digital which is what I'll give it via optic and it sounds pretty good for movies so again doing this on a budget this is a pretty good system for, for what you pay for it. For the actual media player I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi of course now here it is in its most basic form just set up but I need to get audio out of this so to do that I'm going to use well I was going to use this HDMI to audio converter so you have HDMI in HDMI out and also um, optical audio out the problem with this is it's a bit finicky sometimes you get pictures sometimes you don't so I've got a four port switching one which works so I'm only ever going to use one input but it's the same deal, you've got an input and output, but you also get the audio out. So I'm gonna use that. Now I need to power that from here as well. So I modified one of these PoE splitters to get the same five volts out for the, uh, the Raspberry Pi, but also took five volts to, to feed this unit here. Okay. One problem I found with these devices though, is sometimes they have a voltage drop and you get the lightning bolt on the screen. So, I'm going to do that a different way, which I'll show you in a sec. What I'm going to use for power this time is still from the network, but I'm going to use this TP-Link PoE splitter and bring it down to 12 volts. And then I'm going to use one of these 12 to 5 volt converters because they're a bit more stable. Now, I tried this, this long one here first because it's got nice little connectors, but it still had a bit of a voltage drop. So I've got this smaller, this smaller version here, which does actually have bigger capacitors on it than this one. So I tried that and that seemed more reliable. So that's what I'm going to go with for power. So the way I've done that is I've got one here and I've, I've wired the, the connectors that I need on it. And I've also put heat shrink on there just to stop anything shorting out. So now the way it works is to the PoE splitter, the network comes out and goes to the Raspberry Pi as before. But we also have the 12 volts out from it going into this 5 volt converter, 5 volts that feeds the splitter, 5 volts that feeds the Raspberry Pi, and also the Raspberry Pi will feed the input, and then the output will go to, to the projector when I'm done, but I also get this optical audio out now that I can send off to the amplifier for sound. So now I want to plug all that in. That just uh, boots up. And there we go, the Raspberry Pi. And as you can see, I'm running RetroPi with Cody as an add-on. All right, so all this mess here will sit in the roof because I don't actually have to see it or touch it for anything. Everything's controlled by the remote control and a keyboard. And because it's PoE, if I do need to reset it, I can just reset the power on the switch. So this is gonna be in the, in the roof where I don't have to look at it. And now I get audio out of the splitter. And the speakers will be installed and, and that's pretty much the setup. Obviously that's gonna be the projector, but uh, just to show, that's, that's everything that's gonna be installed. Right, I've just put the shelf up here for the audio control, so I'm gonna have that just sitting up there so it's out of the way, maybe a couple ornaments next to it. And for the cable, I'm gonna put that up through the roof and pass it over to the subs. It's gonna go through one of these bullnose things here that just make it so it just goes up into the wall and vanishes. So it should be neat. I've got the projector mount that I'm gonna to fit to the ceiling here. 
So uh, I'll go up and, and check out the situation up there. Uh, basically, it's going to be here so the center of the lens is pointing at the center of the screen, not the center of the projector because obviously the lens is offset a bit. Set the lens up to be in the middle of where the screen's going to be, uh, mount that to the ceiling and start running some cables through. All right, I've measured up and uh, found the spot for where we're going to mount the bracket and I also went in the roof and had to check that there's no wires there and uh, that it'll fit pretty freely. So I'm just going to do a, a pilot hole to confirm that. So. So I'll go up in the roof now and just make sure that is where I thought it was. Okay, back up in the roof, I followed where that wall is along here, so I could have a rough idea where I was. And now that I've drilled the hole, if I turn the light off, you can just see that little bit of light coming through from downstairs. And uh, so that's the hole that I drilled. So it's a bit close to those cables there, but we should be right. I'll measure exactly downstairs where I can mount the, the bracket itself. And what I'll do is I'll put a piece of wood across from from this truss here over to this one, have it go right across to take the weight of the projector so it's not just sitting on the jip rock there. Okay, I've drilled the four holes for the bracket. Now I've just got to get some wood with uh, corresponding holes for it to have something to take the weight in the roof. Okay, this is a different area, but just to show you what I'm going to do, the uh, these bits of wood will go across on the sit on the trusses here so they can have weight down in them because you can't put weight on the uh, jip rock; it'll just break. So these bolts will come up from underneath past this here and go through this wood here and, and that will take the weight of the projector. All right, there's the four holes that I drilled that will be coming up here. What I'm going to do is sit these bits of wood across on top of the truss and that's where the bolts will go through. And that's what you end up with. Those bits of wood going across the truss to give it some support to bolt into and then the four bolts just going down into the lounge. This is the center of this, there's no studs behind it, hopefully. And uh, this is where I'm going to mount this to feed the cable up. But I'm also going to use one of these clips to give it something to screw into because otherwise it would just be loose on the jip rock. So I'll cut that out and mount this here. All right, there's probably a million ways to do this. And the way I do it is I just, I just change it all where it's got to go. You do that all around and then I'll have the space there. Okay, once that's drilled through, that just falls out and I can put the, the bracket on there. And then I'll feed the cable up here once I've drilled the area up the top so it can actually make it up to the roof and that'll be done. Okay, up in the roof here, you can see this is these nails down here. That's where that stud was that I found just to the right of the hole I just put in. So I'm going to drill through here so the cable can come up. Obviously, I'm going to watch out for these power cables that are here. And I've now drilled the hole and you can actually see light coming through from where the thing is because I drilled directly above it. So I'll just go down there and pass that cable up here. Now I'm going to put this bracket in behind there. I don't want to drop it. Of course, otherwise that'll be the end of it. So it sits there, clips over the front here and here, and gives this something to screw into. That's in, cover on, beautiful. And that's ready to pull the cable up into the roof. Okay, I'll just put the shelf back on. See, it sits just above the middle there. Okay, and I'll feed the control cable up there. That should do. It's only got to hold it just until I go up the roof and pull it up. Right, there's the controller for the sound with its cable going straight up into the roof. For the power and the video to the projector, I've got one of these power points here that has a, an extra switch on. I'm just going to take that out and use it for the space to put this HDMI insert in. And that way I'll be able to have just minimal cables from the projector to the ceiling there. The joys of working in the roof. This is not that hot today. I'm just going to put an RJ45 connector on this Cat5 and then that'll be able to power up the system. Screw 
Nie. That's the audio that's coming up from the audio control that's going to go over through the wall when I get an extension cable for it. And now I can plug the, the network into the PoE splitter. And once I, once, I, once I plug it back in on the switch, this will all come up. Okay, the video side of it works. The uh, Raspberry Pi is in the roof working nicely. I don't have the power connected to that yet, so I'm just running a cable just to test this. But, um, you know, the video works nicely, and once I get a screen there, of course, I'll be able to watch it. So it's coming along. The control cable for the audio unit is a 15 pin connector just like a, a VGA cable but you can't just use a VGA extension cable because it doesn't have all the 15 pins in usually. So what I did, I just got a bit of Cat5 and made my own one with just male and female connectors there and soldered all the cables in. So I'll use that as the extension cable to connect the audio control to the main part down here. As you can see there's plenty of progress mess on the way but it's going to be tidy when it's done. That's the main thing. To get all these cables neat, I'm going to use some of this spiral wrap here and wrap them up, and that will just come out of the bull nose um, wall plate. The projector screen has just arrived, and it's not small. All right, now the screen's installed, it's ready to go. All right, so the screen's pretty big. It's, it's just over three meters long, so uh, it's pretty good to watch movies on. So the projector side's all done. The sound's all done with the sound control there, just on the shelf. And they're the only parts visible, that and the screen. Which of course, when I'm not watching, is rolled away. And the sound is behind the corner couch, with the cables all neat, just in case you happen to look. Because I've got Kodi installed and running, I don't need to put the projector on, I can just use the um, web page interface and, and start one of the radio stations that, that I've got set as one of the stream items. So I'll press that, just listen to the radio. Something I want to point out for the sound is the Logitech uh, speaker system can decode Dolby Digital. And that's fine if you've got Dolby Digital uh, encoded source, but if you've got a AAC it, with six channels, it won't be able to decode that. But in Kodi, you can transcode to Dolby Digital. The way to do that is go to the settings and um, make sure it's on advanced, otherwise it won't show. And then for some reason, you've got to make the number of channels two, even though it's not going to be two, just make it two. And then when you go down the bottom, you allow pass through, and also here, enable Dolby Digital AC3 transcoding. That'll convert it to the Dolby Digital on the fly. It'll send it encoded as that to the speaker system, and it'll play the surround sound. So here it is, all finished. Because it's a retro pie, you can run all the classic games as well. So there it is, a relatively cheap way to set up a home cinema. All in all, the equipment, disregarding the projector screen, cost under two grand. Now, I needed the projector screen because of the windows there, but if you've got a flat wall, it works fine. So for two grand, you can set, set up a pretty decent system.